Hello. Hi. Live. Oh, is that your picture from yours or is it just a random picture? Yeah, I always try putting like a really spooky picture, but... That's just like um, firemen. <laughs> but it's a crime scene. And I always watch back sometimes. Well, I don't really watch back, but when I'm looking for cases. And it is pretty laggy, so sorry about that, guys. Yeah. Like our voices aren't up to speed with our mouths. Yeah, I can't... Because it's not throughout the whole way like a consistent lag. It's like builds up throughout it. So what's going on, guys? Um, we Dinner's still in the oven. We started cooking a little late, so... Um, that'll be presented shortly, but we can chat. I can start my yeah. case. Dinner's delayed. How are we? We are doing fantastic. It is pouring outside right now, though, so I hope we don't like lose power or anything because it's yeah. been like thunder and lightning. Lots of lightning. And so if it cuts out, that's what happened. We're at our new kitchen table. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like more just roomy. Feels like we're kind of hanging out at home and we're not like in a high chair, basically. <laughs> Yeah, and I um, I got this beautiful table set up. So everything I've gotten has been like pretty quality, like actual quality, Where right? Where from? I got it from Wayfair. How much was this? I feel like it's it was like six something. It's reasonable. Yeah, it's very reasonable. It's beautiful. Um, it's super easy setup. We got our big jack chair from there. So if you're in the market. I need to make this bigger. I can barely see me, from me, here. Me too. I know. Okay. There we go. What's for dinner? Dinner is coming soon. We are actually having turkey breasts with the skin on and it's all being roasted right now with some carrots and some butter. Super yummy. I'm so excited. Man, I tried your recommendation yesterday for the liver. I can't believe that I actually liked it. Thank you so much. The key was lots of seasoning. That's amazing. Good. What kind of mayo do I buy at Walmart? They all have soybean oil. Uh, isn't there one that doesn't there? Or no? Chosen foods? Yeah, I think they have chosen foods. But if they don't, I mean, you have to, if you want to not eat soybean oil, then you can't get your mayo at Walmart. Sorry. There's other grocery stores though, right? Yeah, and you can also just eat the soybean oil. I mean, it's really up to you. Turkey is gross. I tend to agree. I've almost always had it be extremely I wanted dry. chicken thighs, but we couldn't find like organic chicken thighs, so we went with the best quality, like non-beef, non-red meat, mm -hmm. and that was turkey. Not that red meat's bad, we're just looking for a change-up. I was looking for a change-up. We eat it every single day, twice a day. So I was like, it'd be fun to do something new for you guys. You always see red meat. Had the cookbook bagel, so good, yum. Those are really good. Should we get started? Because we gotta make sure we finish by 5.30. Oh, I'll bring the, uh, the food. And Julius is at daycare right now because he yeah. was just like super antsy this morning. He hasn't been in quite a while, so he needed a day. So we got to pick him up right at 630. So we have to be on time. Um, I just found out I need to go dairy free. Ugh, any ideas? Not a big deal, uh, Joel. I was dairy free. I did the autoimmune protocol. I don't know why you're dairy free, but um, it's totally doable. So like. I did coconut oil instead of heavy cream in, or butter in, in my Bulletproof coffees. You could do coconut, like canned coconut cream in place of heavy cream in like desserts, in recipes. Um, you'll get used to it. You don't like, you don't need to eat cheese on everything. Like I don't, we don't eat cheese that often. Um, sometimes I eat it really often, but sometimes I don't at all. Yeah, like when we're not eating cheese or when we don't have any, it's like really easy to not eat it. So you'll get used to it. Okay, so that still is going to take a little longer. Should I start with my crazy, weird conspiracy I found today? That's just like a little five minute story. Do we have time? I'm worried yeah. about Julius. We okay. got time. So this is a conspiracy that I found while I was researching cases. So when I research cases, I go to the Unresolved Mysteries subreddit. And they have a lot of good stuff there. So that's kind of, I look through your comments first, but then if I can't find anything, I go there. So funny off topic one today. Move, move. You, we talk really you can't, slow. You can't brush me. This, is, this I, takes time. Well, Julius, I'm so worried. I'll get him on time. Don't worry about it. So about a month ago, this is a post, top post in the unresolved subreddit. Mm -hmm. About a month ago, an article was posted from the New York Times talking about glitter. You know, like glitter that you yeah, put on little glitter. kids' yes. toys. Yes. Um, in the article, the companies are very secretive about who they sell to, and there's an odd exchange about the largest buyer of glitter. 
So this is a direct excerpt from the article. When I asked Ms. Dyer if she could tell me which industry served as Glitterex's biggest market, Glitterex is the biggest producer of glitter apparently, who is their biggest market? Her answer was instant. No, I absolutely know that I cannot. I was taken aback, but you know what it is? Like who they're selling to? And she's like, oh God, yes. And she laughed and she would never. And then she says, and you would never guess it. Let's just leave it at that. I asked if she could tell me why she couldn't tell me. And she said, because they don't want anyone to know that it's glitter. Are you guys following this? You kind yeah, of yeah, get what's going I'm on? It. And then I, then the guy asked if I looked at it, I wouldn't know it was glitter. And she said, no, not really. Wouldn't, would I be able to see the glitter? Oh, you'd be able to see something, but it's, yeah, I can't. <laughs> so my first thought was like, oh, it's like, like the porn industry or something like sexual. They don't okay. want, they don't want to share. Um, but like now I don't know, like what could be used as glitter that. So the thing is, it's their, their biggest market. Not, yeah. That's the thing. That's why it's like a big mystery. So this guy, then he throws his theory on there. I don't think he's right, but it's an interesting, funny theory. So quick to th sum up the notes. He has some other notes in the description of this thing. We know the buying industry doesn't want any public connection to glitter. Okay. Important. Glitterex and Meadowbrook, the other large glitter producer, uh, they don't list food and beverages as an uh. application of glitter on their site, despite that being a publicly known application for food grade glitter, non edible glitter. So, what foods are like glittery seeming? Let's I'm get thinking to that. like cakes and stuff. Yeah, maybe stuff like that. Or like, like Twinkies, just like packaged things, just add like a little sparkle to it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Biodegradable glitter is the only type of glitter that offers the buyer a direct contact, implying either a need for discretion or that biodegradable glitter sales are such high volume that they warrant a human touch. So like you can't just go on the website and inquire about the food grade glitter. You have to actually contact someone, mm -hmm. send an email. The two top producers of glitter are located in New Jersey, which is a hub for food production and specifically for flavor, fragrance and ingredient manufacturing. Mm. That's pretty much it. Funny conspiracy. But uh, I was reading through the comments. I'm like, man, this is, this is pretty crazy. Do I think there could be glitter in our food? I'm sure there could be. There definitely could be. It's all about appealing to the market, right? Appealing to kids. Yeah. For sure. But then someone put a comment that has a lot of upvotes. And I'm like, I think this guy's right. He said money, printing of money, like the and like ID cards. Like driver's licenses. Oh yeah, because they're like shimmery. Yeah. That's not a big deal though. That's not a big deal at all. He's saying that's probably what it is. And you could see why they would want to be discreet about it too. No. No? The why? US government like counterfeits, oh. you know. Oh, but like IDs, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah, counterfeit IDs? What do you mean? Fake IDs. So they're putting it on real IDs, the glitter. Yeah, to make it more counterfeit proof. Oh, okay. That seems like it makes sense to me. Yeah. What is that noise? I think it's okay. I think our food's done. It's, it's popping. Let's go grab it. You guys got any theories on this? What do you think? Do People you just asking it? about keto rash a lot. Okay, go grab the food and then we'll get started. Okay. Uh, I am doing a fun case. Uh, I really liked researching this one and reading about it. Glitter is a Murray High Carey movie. That is true. Um, cosmetics industry, shimmery eyeshadow and highlighter. Oh, that makes a ton of sense. I don't know if you would be like, you couldn't like disclose that though. Does it look good? Move the mouse. <laughs> Oh, that looks great. Can they see? I don't think. Should you show an up close to that? No. No? That looks phenomenal. It's beautiful. Can I take an Instagram picture, guys? Is that weird to do? Yeah, that's very weird. Should I not do it? Eh, I wouldn't. Okay. I won't do it. I just got judged by someone who's always on Instagram himself. Am I? I'm never on it. Well, it's a, it's a part of our business. Okay. 
I'm heating so here, up. What are you guys eating? Yeah, I'm heating up some homemade meatballs with Rao's pasta sauce. That sounds good. So here we have turkey mm -hmm. that may or may not be done. We'll find out. This is a bigger one. Okay. This one's a smaller one. Cast iron? Yes, we love cast iron. You can eat carrots on keto. You can eat carrots on keto. Um, you could limit them though. They're pretty yeah. high carb. I would definitely limit them, but like I'm pregnant and my focus isn't so much like being I guess I should serve you super strict keto but like you know eating really good quality whole foods and carrots are delicious I love carrots my daughter cannot go into ketosis we are eating all meat for two weeks the only thing she does is different is one tablespoon of honey in the morning what can she do different well, that tablespoon of honey has about 17 grams of carbs in it, so that is like obviously a potential variable in the equation. <laughs> um, so what she could do different is not have the honey, and maybe she's just eating like too much protein, not enough fat with the addition of the honey. That could be kind of what's going on there. Some Is there a Facebook group for the course? Yes, there is. I'm sorry that you haven't been accepted. It's been six days. You should have been accepted. I will absolutely check on that. Um, as soon as we're done here. Mmm, carrots are perfect. Good. And we cooked it in butter. Mm-hmm, a lot of butter. Rosemary, salt, pepper. Oh my God, they're so good. How much chicken is that? It's turkey and do you know, did you cut out the bone? I cut out the bone. I think it was maybe one and a half pounds total with the bones. For all, both of them? Yeah, for both. I think it's cooked, I don't know. Did it look cooked? Yeah, it looks pretty cooked. What are you guys having? You're pregnant? Yes, I am pregnant. 15 weeks. I also got this in case I needed it, but the turkey is actually moist, which is exciting. Oh, it is? Yeah. Good. With breast. Uh, what do you think of desiccated liver capsules? It's just like really expensive and you don't get a high enough dose yeah, without so small, the eating dose. like the whole bottle. Yeah. So I wouldn't personally, it's not really cost effective. You're better off just buying liver. And if you want to be like taking liver pills, you're better off cutting up liver into little pills and freezing it. Mm -hmm. Definitely make sure it's frozen. Can you use coconut creamer in your coffee? Yeah. Absolutely. It's I don't really do super it. Delicious. Um, no noodle chicken soup, your recipe. Yeah, that one's a really good one. Okay, let me get started, guys. Where's the oven mitt? Didn't you, you brought it No, it's over there. Me. Can you reach it? Hey. Jonathan Luna. Luna's a cool name. It's a hero in Dota. Very majestic. Are you moving that? No, I'm just keeping it here. Oh. No, I can move it. Ah, move that over. Oh my God. Dang it. Oh, wait. What are you doing? Ow, my wrist. We just stained the new table. Now I'll I have to get it. it. I have oh, okay. I have to clean it now. Keep chatting. Major avocado cookies, so good. What medication do you take for a cold with no sugar? Uh, the last time I was like, what did I have? Oh, I had like a sinus infection. I took just pills, like some kind of pill. You took Mucinex. Mucinex no. pills. But that's probably not for a cold. I don't know, just don't take, it's not coming off. Just don't take liquid. My cat's name is Luna. Not great, guys. Might be a dumb question, but are the carbs and veggies the same as grains? Yeah, carbs are carbs, but you know, there's things that come along with them, like veggies are gonna have more nutrients, grains are gonna have more anti-nutrients, and just like gluten, bad things that could have a bad effect on okay, you. Okay, I'm gonna start. Okay. I'm really upset about this, guys. It's really weighing down. I'll, I'll fix it. How will this will rub off. We gotta get like one of those table covers. If anyone knows the name, let us know. Okay, I'm doing the case of Jonathan Luna. So Jonathan Luna grew up, grew up, grew up in Bronx, New York, amongst gangs, drugs, violence. So like not a great area, but he was always very determined to make his way out, become extremely successful, get his education, and he did. He went to college. He got his degree, and then he was actually accepted into the University of North Carolina School of Law and graduated in 1992 and immediately afterwards won a fellowship or a clerkship with a judge nearby. Fantastic. Like, that's not easy to do. So clearly a very bright student, um, good school, 
He was then hired as an associate at Arnold and Porter in Washington, D.C., and he got married in 1993. And he worked for a couple years in the, with the Federal Trades Commission, but what he really enjoyed and was called to was prosecution. So he took a job as an assistant district attorney in New Jersey. And after working there for a couple years, he got a position to be the assistant U.S. attorney in Baltimore. So ultimately starts working in Baltimore, Maryland, as the assistant U.S. attorney. So I'm sure a lot of you know, or many, some of you may know, like Baltimore is very like drug ridden. It's not the greatest area. And even at the time, it had a lot of drugs and violence. So Luna's prosecution career was dealing with a lot of drug dealers, pedophiles, murderers, gang members. So like serious, serious stuff. Um, but all of this really boils down to this one case where it starts. And it's, it's a case about two drug traffickers, Dion and Walter. And Dion's an- Oh, his death might be related to a case he was part of? Maybe. Okay. And Dion is an upcoming rap producer. Mm. I mean, I just, yeah, Matt would probably love that. So I said that. And the star witness is also involved. His name is Warren Grace. So the star witness um, is, you know, before he becomes the witness, is involved with the drug trafficking, but um, is against them in uh, the court trial. So Warren worked for, so just a little background on the drug traffickers. So Warren worked for Dion and Walter, and he had been caught before, and like he went to jail for a couple of years, and every time he would come back out, like Walter would look good, good, Walter would take good care of him when he was in jail. So they were pretty close. And then Warren would just get right back into selling drugs. And eventually he is, Warren's caught, and his house is raided. And they find drugs, they find lots of drugs and guns, and he's charged with aiding and abetting also. Um, so he could face up to 40 years in prison. So he made a deal to give up Walter, his supposed like good friend, his caretaker, um, who had committed a drug-related murder earlier. And he also said he would talk a lot about like the drug ring he was involved with um, if the FBI like would lower his charges. Okay, I'm not fully following. Give me the, there, there's two people we're talking about now? There's three total. Okay. So Dion and Walter are the big drug dealers. Dion and, goes in and out of jail. No, Wa Warren. Warren's below them. He's like the pawn that they use to like sell drugs. He's their biggest okay. seller. Okay. So Warren's in and out of jail. And now Warren has turned on them essentially because he doesn't want to go to jail for 40 years. And he decides to become an informant. So okay. the FBI are all over this. Mm -hmm. Like they want to stop this ring. They want to turn in a upcoming rap producer who's also like in charge of heroin trafficking. Okay. So Warren, um, so... The first thing that happens with Warren's case is that Luna, the main guy that we're talking about here, said he would drop the aiding and abetting charge as um, part of the conviction, which would drop Warren's sentence from 40 to 30 years. So that's a big drop already. For, for cooperating? Yeah, for cooperating. And that doesn't do much for me, 10 years. Well, he's continuously promised things and Warren eventually pleads guilty to just the gun and drug charges and he's released to a halfway house. So he can continue to live in this halfway house as long as he works as an informant for the FBI. So he pretends to be a drug dealer and he goes, he talks to um, Walter and Dion, you know, and gets some information. So, okay, do Walter and Dion know he's been picked up though? Obviously been not, jail? obviously not. Informants are never known to the public. Well, he must've been out of contact for a few days when he got arrested, right? So? People he's, find out about this He's been this arrested in and out of jail, but no, he's not found out. Okay. Okay. So. Um, Warren also has to like agree to not use drugs, not use guns, and he's even wearing a monitoring device as long as he's in the halfway house. But he ends up breaking all of these rules. He like shoots up the neighborhood, he's selling drugs, um, and he even removes his monitoring device. But the FBI agents, they don't care. They turn a total blind eye. All they care about is getting Dion and Walter. So they allow him to just stay on the street, even though it's very unsafe, obviously. Yeah, for the so public. he's just wiling out. Like he has no he regard has, for human life. Exactly. Okay. So as the FBI agents are building this case against Dion, Luna is prosecuting other cases. So Luna's not entirely involved in this case just yet. It's the FBI's, uh, FBI's like case at this point. So uh, Luna, you know, prosecutes a well-known bank robber. And for that particular case, he has to wheel in 63, he decides to wheel in $63,000 
into the courtroom, sealed in three separate bags, and show it to the jury and the judge. So Why? just like as evidence, right? This is this is the money. That sounds this absurd. is the amount of money that was taken. No, it's like a tactic to get the jury to be like, whoa, that's a lot the of money. The thing is when you see sixty three thousand dollars, it's like this. It's not like a crazy amount of money. Well you could like distribute it evenly, like to make you it. You bring it all once and then you're like, whoa. Yeah, exactly. Sure, it's a tactic. Um so um, it's then supposed to be entered into evidence. So Luna was in charge of the money and getting it back to the evidence room at the end of the trial. And at the end of the 10 days, it's realized that one of the bags of money is missing. So it was actually a bag of $38,000, but the media starts to report it as $36,000. And it just becomes known that like this $36,000 bag of money that was in evidence went missing. So Dion, back to Dion and Walter, they're eventually arrested and charged with trafficking heroin and Walter um, with the drug related murder that Warren, remember, had promised to talk about. Mm -hmm. So Luna ends up having to prosecute this case. This is a big case. Um, both the facts that Walter violated his terms when he was in the halfway, no, Warren violated his terms when he was in the halfway house on release and um, that he was a paid informant are not provided to the defense in discovery. And that's supposed to be something that the defense should have knowledge of. I mean, you have to know he's a paid informant. That totally invalidates the case. Well, it doesn't invalidate the case, but it's something that the defense should know. So you, they could question course. and Why bring would you up. not know that? Well, they weren't told. In t like did the judge make a ruling or something? No, the def the the prosecution just didn't give it into discovery, which you're not allowed to do. You're supposed to turn over so everything. So does that void the trial? Well, that's yeah. We're getting into that. That could lead to a mistrial, sure. Um, okay. So moving on. Um, but at the end of the first day of trial, someone tips off the defense, and they um, brought it to the judge's intention attention that. Warren had been violating all his rules. So the defense, um, on the first two days, uh, so the defense like tries to say like, hey, this should be a mistrial, dismiss the case completely. One of those two, the judge doesn't go for it. He just wants to move along with the case. So coming to the case, on the first two days of trial, when Warren takes the stand, the informant, he really struggles to give a lot of detail about the drug ring. He's definitely not like, has, hasn't been prepped properly, it seems. He's probably not even that high up. He's just like some rinky dink guy. And Luna even decided to have, so with the um, information revealed that Warren was just like violating all the rules, Luna decides to pull like a move and say, have Warren testify like, hey, I did violate these rules while I was out. So he shows, so this is like showing the jury that like, I'm not trying to hide anything. We're not trying to sweep it under the rug. We just, you know, didn't disclose it. But here we are, Warren's testifying that he was violating his rules. So before this trial, Luna was always described as a very skilled and experienced attorney. But for some reason in this case, like he seemed to be the opposite. So he was fumbling a lot. Warren wasn't prepped for trial and Luna was like reprimanded several times for forgetting files for just like, Forgetting the discovery, of course, so by we the think judge. Luna, Luna's on the take now. Okay, I don't know. What That's that means. what we're thinking. Sure. Um, the two, the two higher ups are like paying him. No, we're not thinking that. You I'm can think that. Okay, that. sure. <laughs> um, so the defense argues for a federal court inquiry into the mishandling of Warren Grace, and the judge agrees. So this like brings on a lot of heat to the FBI and also the district attorney's office. Like the, you know, there's gonna be an inquiry of like how they actually handle their informants. So Luna, like all of a sudden, just out of fear, I guess, of everything, he comes up with a plea deal and he said he would drop charges. So Dion would get 10 years and Walter would only get 15 years. So he'd be dropping the murder charge completely. Can you just do that? The attorney has the power to... So the plea was taken by both the defendants, Walter and Dion, but Luna couldn't actually drop the drug-related charge because for drug-related charges, they have to be prosecuted and it was against the law to do that. So Luna made this promise that he couldn't ultimately keep. So the judge said the plea had to be signed off and in writing before the trial could conclude. So he either had to bring in that plea that day or the next day the trial would continue. 
So after the third day of trial, Luna attempts to figure out how to make this murder committed by Walter go away. So, and, and the, the reason it's a struggle is because when he entered the first filing papers for the prosecution, he wrote about the murder, like the drug related murder, because that was a big part of Walter's case, right? So it makes sense. So you sense. can't really make that go away. So it's hard, yes. Um, so he couldn't actually figure out how to make the, make it go away and make the plea deal actually legal. And if like, if he does do that then, and it's found out that could like just ruin his career. So obviously like a big deal. So shortly before midnight, Luna left his office with the plea of Dion complete, but Walter's only half completed because he couldn't figure out how to get the murder charge to go away. And okay. the security at the building, something to note, there's no cameras inside. And the only camera that exists on the property is in the parking lot. And it doesn't show exact people or faces. It just shows like cars coming in and out. Is this an FBI building? Um, it's a government building. Okay. Yeah. Um, what year are we in? Uh, I don't like 90, 90s. No, 2003, I think 2003. Um, so again, no cameras inside or outside really, except the one. And Luna usually needs glasses to drive, okay. but he leaves his glasses on his desk up in the office. Okay, so he was somehow intercepted before he got to his car. That's possible. He might, we don't know if he left with someone or left alone. That's like totally unknown. So um, he gets in his car and the camera doesn't show like who's driving or how many people are in the car. And he, we're just gonna say he. So he headed out of state immediately and went to Delaware. And at 12.57 a.m., $200 is withdrawn at a, west, at a rest stop. So his Easy Pass recorded his entrance into Delaware from Maryland, but the remaining tolls were paid with cash. So he's, and doesn't live in Delaware again. Okay. So he's just in Delaware for some reason. So 2.37 a.m. When you do the Easy Pass, don't they have the camera that a lot of times like, can get a picture of the driver? I don't know if they do. Why I don't know if they would do that for everyone in 2003. I don't know if they did that. Okay. Um, it's usually just at red lights. Because I remember, yeah, I got a red light ticket before. Yeah, they do like, it at red lights. Just a picture of me. And that's like, really up. new. That's super new. And at 2:30, so at 2:37 a.m., he crosses New Jersey lines. So he's on the turnpike and he heads into New Jersey. And again, the tolls are paid with cash. And then shortly after entering New Jersey. The car heads west towards Pennsylvania. So he's just like all over the map and we're not sure why. Um, and then at 4.04 a.m., his car leaves the turnpike and the toll ticket was later found to have a spot of blood on it. So at this point, mm -hmm. we're assuming at least he was injured, right? During his travels, if not before he got in the car, we're not really sure. So what do you make of the journey thus far? Well, I need a carrot. So why, what? they didn't go in like a straight path. They went like- Just all over the place. Yeah, so it seems like if he didn't bring his glasses, two thoughts, one is like, I would probably do this if I went down to the car and I'm like, oh man, I forgot my glasses. I'll just risk it this time. I don't want to go all the way back up, assuming it's like upstairs and like all that type of stuff. So maybe that happened. I can see that being the case. So I wouldn't necessarily say just because he doesn't have his glasses, he was for sure like forced into a car. So why is he driving all over the place? He's probably at this point, since I don't know what happens next, like if he's ever seen again, there is foul play, obviously. But yeah. Um, yeah, to me, that seems like foul play. I don't think. Why wouldn't he just go home? I don't think he was met with foul play in the office, though. That doesn't really make sense. OK. Right. Maybe. Because it's a government building. We don't really know. There's no cameras anywhere to really say anything. Okay. Okay. So now we're getting to like him and his body and everything. So that's the journey. 4.04 AM is the last thing. He's off the turnpike because you get the toll ticket. Then that's all we know. And then tire tracks are eventually found by a warehouse used for drilling where behind the building. So this is where he was thought to be left for dead. The car had a large pool of blood in the back seat of the car as well as on the driver's side of the door. So it was thought that maybe he got from the back seat to the front and drove away, like trying to escape. It makes more sense that he was in the driver's seat, got attacked and then put in the back to me. 
Right. But then, like, how did his car go? Oh, you think he got attacked at the warehouse? No. No. What are you thinking? He was already attacked. Yeah. But, like, he was in the driver's seat at some point in his car. Someone attacks him, puts yeah, him in the back. Yeah, he was in the back seat. Drives to the right. warehouse. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. So he was back there. Someone else was driving. And that's why there's a big pool of blood. So he was, like, even being, um, what's it called? Abused. Not abused. Um, what is the word? What? When you're being held hostage and you're, like, being mutilated and stuff. Tortured? Tortured. He was being tortured. That's what I'm thinking. So... He, so the car is eventually found a short, short bit away, a short distance at a creek. And his f body is found face down in the creek right next to the car. Car's still running. And this is at 5.30 a.m. when like workers come to the creek area and everything. Um, and he had 36 stab wounds all over his chest, back and neck. $36,000 were missing. Mm. Um, he had slashes all over his hands. I like light defensive wounds, right? Well, who would be really stabbing him based on the missing money, though? That would mean it was yeah, because actually thirty eight thousand was missing. Like so a cop, we're, we're saying just like, like I don't know, just an interesting note to point out. I thought um, coincidence. So the slash all over the hands, like defensive wounds, and then there was some genital mutilation. So that's just to note. And the actual death, though, of of Jonathan Luna was drowning. So he was wearing everything he wore to court that day. So, you know, he, he never went home. He just, he just went from his office to wherever and to then death. ended up in the creek. Yeah. Death, so he was found 5.30 a.m. that morning. And that was also the fourth day of Dion and Walter's trial. And the assistant U.S. attorney appears in court on behalf of um, of Jonathan Luna and he has some knowledge of the case so he's able to like tr to go forward with the trial um, and he ends up going back to the office to find the plea deals and he finds that Luna was halfway through Walter so within an hour he just finishes up the plea deal he gets them signed off and he gives them to the judge it was that easy for this guy okay um, and the ultimately the judge accepts the plea deals the defense signs them and then dion and walter get their deals so like something luna couldn't do at all and it took him all night long this other u.s district attorney was so easily able to do which is just interesting right um so when luna was found the coroner immediately revealed that it was a homicide the stab wounds were shallow as if it was just like a knife being held against him you know like he was being held hostage or they were trying to get info out of him or he was just being threatened also days later stories were leaked to the media from unnamed federal law sources reminding everyone about this 36k that was missing also stories about luna having affairs being online websites trying to get women um also he had lots of debt and he had issues at work so these are all it just sounds stories. like you're implicating the police a lot it sounds mm -hmm. like that they were trying the fbi well the fbi agents were under a lot of heat and they didn't want to take the downfall of the 36k missing right so it sounds like... I don't know how murdering a guy would fix that, though. You, then it's just his fault, probably, that the 36... Well, there thousand. was also a lot of corruption in Baltimore at the time. Like, it was something that the FBI and even, like, the police department, they were gonna, they were on their way of being, like, dealt with in terms of, like, money being used for sexual favors and a lot of corruption going on. Just, just something to note. Um... So six weeks later, a pen knife is found in the creek right near where Luna's body was found. And more stories are also leaked that it should be strongly considered that Luna committed suicide. Because, no. he, because he supposedly was going to face a polygraph test regarding the 36K. So like the stress of it, you know, that. And it was the FBI that tried to get the coroner to rule it a suicide. But all three coroners they went to were like, no, this is not a suicide. This is obviously a homicide. Mm -hmm. So that to me seems like foul play. Like the FBI is trying to push it in one direction when it's clear that it's not. And FBI's have dealt with this stuff. Yeah, it's also probably just easier for them if it's a suicide. Yeah, because it also covers up their ass. No, and they just have to do less work also. But it covers up a lot of their tracks. 
the 36K was missing, whatever. They just swipe it. Sounds like you have your mind made up. I do. Okay. Um, so the theories are homicide, suicide, and like then there's just some talk of like all the corruption going on at the time. So yeah. What do you think then? What well, do you think? I don't really. So like when these people were on trial, I assume they like go to the court, then they go or they're in jail, right? They're not mm -hmm. roaming the streets. Right. So guys out? we're thinking it would be they would hire someone or it'd be like an associate. But why would they kill someone who was about to give them a good plea? So ultimately, um, Dion gets nine years, Walter gets 14 years, and then Warren, the informant, gets seven. So what do you make of him not being able to get the deal done? How does that fit into the, the police narrative? I mean, that he was a he was a good guy and he really couldn't, you know lie about something that was so serious a drug related murder like he wasn't able to actually put pen to paper and be like you know this didn't happen when it happened he was just a good attorney well that's not a good attorney because your job as an attorney is to defend your clients isn't it no he's a prosecution oh he wants to put them in jail for a long time oh he's trying to get the most time yeah he's a prosecutor there's no real, so the only real theory you presented was the cops, I guess, then, right? Just because money went missing, $36,000 went missing when he brought it into a court, so, huh. And also, like, the mishandling of the informant, they were already being looked at by federal security. Mm -hmm. The informant, the FBI agency and the district attorney's office were under a lot of scrutiny. Okay. So if they can pin it on one guy, they do that all the time Did, so, in like movies and so stuff. So I get, has the case been resolved? Like, no, it's still open. Is the thirty-six thousand dollars pinned on him because of this? It's just everything's open. It doesn't sound to me like you even need to pin the thirty-six thousand dollars on anyone. It's just like, oh man, we lost the money. It doesn't like there could just be an unresolved case. You don't have to murder a guy. Yeah, but that's a big deal. Missing from evidence. That means someone who had was, access to the evidence chamber, which is all the agents only, took the money. Someone in, someone corrupted took the money from there, right? It okay. couldn't have been you or me or an So outsider. someone who's capable of killing thir or taking $36,000 is potentially capable of killing a man? Or hiring a hitman. Um, did, was there suspects in the taking of the money? No, there was nothing. See, so the unless... two suspects were FBI agent Skinner, who was highly involved in taking care of the informant that was mishandled, mm -hmm. and Luna. Those were the two people. Okay. And I imagine Luna probably had his ideas about who took the money, I would have to say. Yeah. Because if he knew he didn't take it, then he's like... It doesn't make sense that Luna would have taken the money, because why would he be killed then? Right. And, but okay. that's why they think it's a suicide. That's so why the, they're trying to make it a suicide. Yeah, the fact that his glasses are left at the office, that aligns a lot with the, an inside job. It doesn't align as much with someone outside. Yeah, with an Asian walking him out and being like, follow me or I'll kill your wife or whatever, yeah. you know? You guys got theories on this? I actually, you persuaded me. I do think it could have been an inside job, definitely. Just because the glasses, that's the main piece of evidence, which could just be he forgot them. And there's also someone in chat named Standard American Diet Connect, which, which is funny. Okay, let me pull up. Is that like a play on Keto Connect, or did you, is that just a name you've always had? That was an interesting case. I loved it. All the crime. I like the you court like stuff. A, yeah, you like court stuff, and you like police corruption a lot. Yeah, because it exists. We don't talk I, about it. I hate when it gets into police corruption because I feel like people are either like, anytime it's potential police corruption, they're all about it or they're very anti any kind of police corruption. Well, I feel like if you're related to someone in like a law enforcement officer, you're very like upset about it. One time I said something and my roommate Margaret, her dad was like a sher um, sheriff. Mm -hmm. She was not happy. Have you seen The Wire? Yeah, I love The Wire. It's in Baltimore, I'm pretty this sure, This turkey is right? great, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, okay, got to move on to my case since we are running... I have to pee real quick, but... Running behind. Oh, oh man, I got to sign into my account.
The Wire is a fantastic show. It is pretty fantastic. I tried getting Mega to watch it. It's a little dated, but it's obviously timeless, but for her it was a little dated. It has to be a homicide because who can stab themselves 36 times? Yeah, that's a good question. She said they were kind of superficial wounds, but I agree. And the, the cause of death was drowning. <laughs> you said it in a past video and my wife and I was looking for a good name to call our channel. That's funny. Oh, the sound went off. And uh, Hello? Sound back? It's back? Okay. That's, I don't and, understand why that would happen. And who would mutilate their own genitals? Oh, well, you, didn't, you didn't say that happened. I said genital mutilation. You did? You just like block out anything that's like gross to you. No. <laughs> Sorry guys, I gotta get signed into my document here. My daughter's name is Luna. That's a great name. Lagging now. I do like that name. Sound is delayed, here. sound is good, it's lagging, it's back. A lot of discrepancies. Sorry guys, give me one sec here. What is everyone else having for dinner? I love just talking about food. And eating it, of course. We're in. Okay. Today, we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Andrew Gosden. Mm. This is a pretty interesting one. And this happened September 14th, 2007, London, England. Ooh. Andrew is 14 years old at the time. Okay. So he lived with his family in South Yorkshire, about 14 miles from London. And he had mother and father and an older sister. And he was gifted and talented. He actually was like a part of the gifted program at school. So he was really smart. Okay, cool. Kind of not socially smart though. He was just kind of, he was into heavy metal a lot. Kind of like gothic, right? Yeah. So he was 14 in 2007. So in 2007, we were like just a little older than that. We were like about 20. Something like that. I was 17. 17, yeah, 17, 18. So not too different. I remember in my high school, there was definitely a fair gothic yeah. contingent. A, a big group of them, they all hung out. Yeah. And there was always like the one cool one, the king of the goths, we called him. There was. You had one too, the king of the goths? Yeah, he shot himself, I told you. Oh, really? With a shotgun, twice. Oh my gosh, that dampened the mood. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so the one note his family said is that he was not at all streetwise. And I think this pertains to me when I was 14. Like, that makes sense. if you put me in the middle of Detroit, like, I don't know what to do. Like, how do I get on a bus? How do I buy things? I don't know how to do any of that. Like my mom did all that. Yeah. I mean, you don't live in, he didn't live in the city, right? Yorkshire. Oh, sure. Okay. So I think it's a relatively populated suburb. Okay. Uh, some notes about his family, middle-class Christians. Worth noting, maybe important later on. So the day of the disappearance. It took his mother a few days to get him out of the, his bed, which she reported as being slightly unusual. Okay. And typical daily routine, Andrew leaves the house for school to get on the bus. Totally normal. So you're just like more tired or something? Yeah, just like a note. Like slightly more tired. Took me a few times to get him out of bed. It doesn't usually take that long. Okay. Instead, though, of going to the bus stop, what Andrew actually does, unbeknownst to his family, is he waits at a nearby park for the rest of the family to leave the house, go to their jobs, go to school, etc. Kids do that. Yeah. I don't think he's done it, but that's actually a point of contention. Maybe he has done this before. Yeah. He then returns to the house when it's empty, and this is confirmed by CCTV footage of the neighbor has. I don't know, like, how. He might just have security cameras. He's, like, one of those guys. But he has footage of Andrew doing this. Who? The neighbor. Oh, weird. Yeah. Also, someone said it's three hours from London, so it doesn't seem very populated. Oh, it's three hours from London? It's not a big city. Thank you. I thought someone said it was 14 miles in what I was reading. I must have got bad info there then. Okay, go on. Okay, so it's three miles. Oh, yeah, that actually makes more sense because the train tri trip takes like over two hours. I'm a dummy. So when he goes back home, he takes off his school uniform because he goes to like a uniformy school. How many of you guys religious. went to uniform schools? 
You didn't, right? Mm-mm. And he puts on his comfortable clothes, which is a Slipknot t-shirt and black jeans. A slipknot. What? Slipknot. A lot of kids wore the Slipknot t-shirt. And they listened to it, I'm assuming. Yeah, he loved it. Oh my gosh. So he packs a bag and he takes a wallet, his PSP. Important note, he forgets his PSP charger or he doesn't bring his PSP charger. Maybe he's just going to hang out. We don't know if it's a forget or if it's a doesn't bring. Okay. Conscious decision. Leaves house and goes to a cash machine, withdraws 200 pounds of the 214 pounds in his account. Hmm. So he just has, you know, like his little checking account. We all had that when we were kids. Takes it all out. Yeah. So, so if he's buying not, something. Yeah. If he's not street smart, this seems out of line to me. To, like, he sounds street smart. Because when I was 14, I would, I'd have no idea. Like, can I get my money? Like, I don't know how to withdraw money from a bank. And I would think my mom would have to like, sign off on it. Yeah. I'd be like, they're going to notify my mom somehow. I don't, did I have a card at 14 to withdraw money? Yeah, this, that know. sounds odd to someone who's not street smart to me. Goes to a train station and purchases a one-way ticket to London. One-way ticket. When you buy a one-way ticket to you London. You ain't coming back. That, but you're also offered a very cheap return ticket. It's like what? 10% the cost of the one-way ticket. You know that? Yeah. In London? Well, I don't know that, but I've been looking into the case. And he turned it down. It was like, you want to have a few, if you throw a few pennies in here, you get a return ticket. And he was like, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. So maybe he was just like over it. His like religious life. Maybe. And another thing is it wasn't that religious. His parents identified as Christian, but we'll okay. come to find out it wasn't that religious. Okay. Um, at 9.35 a.m. he boards the train to London. Witnesses see him getting on the train by himself, sitting in a little train chair, and playing his PSP the entire way. A lot of witnesses corroborate this. Okay. Nothing he, abnormal. He arrives in London at 11.20 a.m. So it's about a two-hour trip. And the last ever sighting of him is on CCTV footage at the station leaving at 11.30 a.m. It's the King's Cross station in London. That's it? That's it. That's the last we ever see of him. But there's a lot more information we're going to get. There's not a lot more, but there's, no! there's some you more. You always do these cases. There's some more. So the as soon as the school realizes he's not there that day, they call the parents, which is you know standard protocol everywhere. Mm -hmm. But they misdialed the number, apparently, or they didn't call at all, which I, that's more wow. likely to me. They didn't call. But they say they misdialed. So the parents were never notified. They would leave a voicemail. That's true. They leave voicemails. Family comes home and prepares dinner. And, you know, this is like a few hours. Like the family comes home, settles in, watches TV, makes dinner. And then they're like, hey, sis, go get your brother. Dinner's ready. Oh, they assumed he was home in his room. Yeah, so that's the kind of kid he was. He's like, I'm just in my room all day. Yeah, he's a nerd. Yeah. Goth nerd. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she goes up and he's not there. So they start looking around the house, calling his friends, everything to try and see if they can find out where he is. Eventually, nothing comes up. Police are notified. Okay. They realize that he did not go to the school bus that day. And the father and daughter drive the car around the neighborhood just beginning a standard search. I think that's what anyone would do. That's just like, that feeling must be so scary. I know. We One got time. Julius went, when Julius went missing for a little. Yeah. He didn't go I missing. He just ran and he was unresponsive to us. Yeah, and I just, I couldn't, I had to cry. Because like 99% of the time when I say something to him, it's like it's obviously getting through to him. But then this time he got outside, no no leash on, and he's just walking. I'm like, Julius, and he's just not listening at all. He's just like running. He looks Mind back. He's like own. playing games. Yeah. yeah. But one time I was, uh, I opened the door and my pet guinea pig, Olive, ran out. So he's back to Olive. And I immediately got out, looked for her. I like looked at the direction she ran. Did you see her run Completely away? Completely disappeared. Yeah, I saw her ran out of the house. You can't chase down an olive? I think I like had something in my hand. I set it down. I got out, looked the way she went. Couldn't find her. I was like looking every way hy hysterically. And then she's under the bush right near the, right near the door. That's so scary. Oh, my God. <laughs> she's just sitting there under the bush. Poor thing. Okay, sorry. Back to the story. I Sorry, I'm eating turkey, someone asked. Um, so, Okay. Another interesting note is they have this thing, since they take the buses a lot apparently, there's a community fair jar in the house, 
and there was one hundred dollars in it, one hundred pounds, which he didn't touch. Okay. At all. He did not take his passport. They determined, they searched his room. They're like, okay, he didn't pack. It's not like a runaway thing. He didn't pack like I'm moving to the next town. It was just spur of the moment. I don't have much on. Oh, they didn't, he didn't take his passport because yeah. you can get to different countries. That's so crazy in Europe. Yeah. Okay. Police eventually learned that Andrew was sold a one-way train ticket to London, which shifts the investigation away from the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So that's big, obviously. They're like... So to me, I don't know, if you're the parents, what are your thoughts then? You're like... You freak. In my mind, I'd be like, did he do this on his own? Why would he do this? Like, why? Like, did someone take him from the bus stop to London? I don't know. Yeah, there's a couple of think, like, lines of thinking I have. One is they knew that he's fully capable of this, and they're like, just waiting for it to happen type like of a maybe situation. maybe he's gone to London before with yeah, his Yeah, he's done things before. Who knows? Because a lot of the info we're getting on his personality and stuff is from the parents. Or the second is like, whoa, I had no idea he was capable of this. He went to London. Now what is he capable of if he's capable of going to London? Yeah. Andrew did not have a mobile phone or any access to the internet. No digital record of his potential intentions could be found. So to me, when I first heard this, I'm like, okay, it's probably a long time ago. Makes sense, right? Yeah. 2007, though. In 2007, I was spending eight hours a day playing video games online, and so was everyone. Or like chatting on Instant Messenger. Wait, For a he, didn't, he didn't have a mobile phone, no, but he had nothing. like a credit card and a PSP? He had a debit card, apparently. Okay. But yeah, so now when I'm thinking back to this, this is very odd that he has no access to the internet at all. He didn't have a computer? No. The family just got their first computer two months ago. Well, maybe they didn't, they weren't well off. They were middle class. I don't know. They had $100 sitting on their table for people to take. Yeah, they were, they were pretty well off, middle class. So that's interesting too. So now I'm thinking like, was the family really restrictive and like overbearing? Yeah, that was my first thought. Like if he does go to a religious school and he hates it and he wants like real friends, he doesn't have friends at school because he's wearing Slipknot shirts. Uh, November 2008, so this is about a month after the disappearance, a man entered a police station after hours and he said he had info about Andrew Gosden. Gosden. When the officers showed up, because they got this call, they're like, okay, someone's at the office, they got info, he's gone. Never hear from him again. Hmm. Just an interesting note, I don't know that that means much. It could just be a random person inserting themselves into a case. So some questions. That's kind of all there really is. Um, what were his motivations for leaving? That's it? That's, it's a very limited so this info is not, on this, this case. This is not a case. I can even, like, break <laughs> apart. Well... So, like, of course, when he got to London, like, something happened. He was either taken or, I mean, he's probably, I'm assuming he's still not alive out there. You think he's met with foul play? Yeah. I like, think what that... is he doing with the $200? Maybe if he's, like, going to buy drugs or, like, maybe he wanted to try drugs for the first time and you can only get them in a big city. A lot of people have said that because the bag he brought was, like, bigger than it needed to be apparently so like for hiding drugs potentially or oh. some kind of transaction but he wasn't even trying to get back home so like he was just That's gonna buy thing. drugs and then stay in london forever why wouldn't you buy the return ticket that really <laughs> throws a wrench into a lot for me and it's weird that he didn't have access to online because i would have said like maybe he met someone online and exactly. he stay with them in london what um, do you guys think so what were his motivations for leaving this is obviously something that to me it seems like I would imagine some kind of conflict with the parents that they're not really upfront about. It's usually you feel that way. Yeah. So that seems like a prime motivation to me. And there was a metal concert going on in London that night, but there's a metal concert going on every night in London, I would think. But you also buy a train to get home, right? You're going to go back that night. Yeah. Unless the ticket only worked for that night and maybe he was going to stay over till the next day. No, ticket works for whenever. And some other notes is no jacket. He took the PSP. He didn't pack clothes. So that's all like short term. So he just knew. He's thinking. like, I only need my PSP for the two hour train ride there. And then I can just toss it. <laughs> Someone said, so the police doesn't ha station doesn't have a camera. They can check when the guy came in. It doesn't seem like it. It seems like they're way behind the times in Yorkshire. 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 But I looked up the battery life of a PSP, the original one, which is, seems like the one he had. It's like five to ten hours. A lot of people also said you can use the PSP for accessing the internet, and a lot of people do that. 
So maybe he was using it. We just don't know. It doesn't make sense to me that he has a PSP, he has an Xbox, but he doesn't have the internet. A computer. Like a computer. Uh, they don't have a home computer even. Like, wouldn't the dad or mom use it? It's like, I would even say maybe something happened and then the computer was disposed of by the parents if we're getting really crazy. Mm. Really, like, conspiracy minded. Yeah, maybe he joined a gang. Maybe he was taken by a gang. Maybe he was getting a ride back home. Hmm. Okay, then a little weird note not much validity to it but someone reported speaking with someone online who was looking for help like a message board or something and they said their partner left them and they needed money for rent and this person went by the name andy rue and when they asked for uh they asked for like a method of transfer or whatever he said i don't have a bank account i left home and i was for when i was 14. Hmm. potential lead but nothing really materialized out of that. I mean, he might just then be out there. And then I'll, we're getting late on time here. So there's no reports of him being bullied at school, but who know, really knows what that means. What's his emotional state? I remember when I was a kid, 14. 14 well, 14 girl is different than 14 year old boy. So you tell us. Well, I can imagine listening to the music, having just like very emotional music. You're very emotionally like... I don't know. You, you can get driven by emotions easily. Yeah, right? you're a lot in your head. Yeah. And you think like people are against you, like the world is against you. I mean, 14 year old minds are like the worst minds, right? Yeah. I can imagine him just doing something crazy for sure. Do the parents know more than they're saying is a note I took. Um, So one thing I would say, if he, it didn't seem like a short term thing to me. It was a permanent runaway, but not very well thought out because he had no packed belongings. But you don't pull some kind of massive deception, like wait at the park, buy a train ticket, go to London, yeah. and then just come back the next day and like, hey guys, I'm back. It's like, you know, there's going to be. Well, if your parents were going to say no, I did so many things when. And you just came back and then you got punished. I luckily came back, yeah. Another thing is Andrew did not hang out with anyone outside of school. His parents said they had a small group of friends at school, but no real social life outside of school. Hmm. Some theories. Now we'll go to theories. Just run through these. Foul play. And I think to me, the thing that makes the most sense is there's a kid sitting alone on a train playing PSP. That's to me very like signaling of a, of an opportunity opportunity. Yeah. Right? He's just sitting there all alone, very clear that he's alone by himself, 14 years old. Maybe you follow him as he's leaving. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And even when he gets to London, it's easy. He's walking around with a backpack. Like, I don't know. It, it Like, he's young. I mean, yeah. we don't know how he looked, right? He could have looked really young. So... If you look 12 or something. There's pictures of him. He looks age appropriate, basically. Okay. One theory, pretty strong theory, actually. A lot of people say this could be the case. He was gay and wouldn't be accepted by his family, so he moved to London for a new life. But learning more, it seemed like this is maybe a lot from the parents, but it seemed like his parents were rather accepting because they didn't baptize their kids. They wanted them to like figure out religion for themselves. Yeah. So it seems like they'd maybe not be totally closed off to having a gay son. Andrew was unhappy and left to commit suicide. Doesn't make a ton of sense to me. You don't have to go to London to do yeah. that and withdraw $200. Unless you were going to overdose on a drug to commit suicide. I know people who've done that. I also looked up the average age of suicides and like 14 is on the young side. Yeah. Like, like it's it's pretty uncommon for 14-year-olds to commit suicide. It's more like... Yeah, you have the thoughts, I think, but I don't know if going through with it in that sort of a way, like going to London and having this elaborate plan. Yeah. And there's one weird thing it's that called the Harry Potter connection. Apparently, he was, like, mildly into Harry Potter. The, the two months before he went missing, there was, like, a big drop, like Harry Potter, the final book, one of the movies, a video game. And the station he went to in London was where Platform 9 and 3 quarters was. I don't know how this really ties into anything, but it was like someone throwing that out there. And then probably 
foul play, and then this is my other top theory, is he was lured to London by someone he either met in real life or on Xbox Live or PSP. Yeah, you have internet connection if you have live. Yeah. They didn't say if you had live or not. They didn't say. He had an Xbox, though. So I guess we'll just never know. That's, that's unfortunate. I feel like that happens so much, just kids that age go missing. Can you be mildly into Potter? That's a great question. I don't think you can. <laughs> not at that age, I don't think. Well, they just asked his parents, and it was like, was he into Harry Potter? And he was like, hey, yeah, he read a few of the books. Yeah. Um, all right, I guess that's it. No one really had anything of note, so I didn't say anything. Yeah, you guys got any theories? <sighs> Who is Larry Potter? <laughs> yeah, probably lured to London, would you say? Yeah. All right. Yeah, it has to be some form of foul play. Or, or I guess he could just be... But at 14, can you really go to London and establish a new life for yourself with zero possessions? I mean, if you, like, join a gang or something, yeah. Gangs take on, like, 12-year-olds and 10-year-olds. He didn't seem like the gang type. You don't really know who seems like the gang type or the drug type or the Harry Potter type. Like, you don't seem like a Harry Potter type. That's true. All right, guys, this was fun. That's it. We got to run. We got to pick up Julius. Until next week. Have a beautiful evening. We'll see you guys soon. Oh, and comment below with cases for next week. If you guys have any cases you love, let us know.